In the months after the BP oil spill, hundreds of sea turtles were recovered from the orange slicks that stretched across the Gulf of Mexico. For the Kemp's Ridley turtles, already a critically endangered species, the spill posed a devastating blow. Now, a year later, the turtles exposed to oil have mostly recovered. So the vast majority of the turtles that were recovered alive, and those ranged from turtles that were lightly oiled to moderately oiled to very heavily oiled. The vast majority of those turtles, once cleaned and you know, given veterinary care and support, survived and have been released. It may take decades to know the full effect of oil on the sea turtles, but in the meantime, there's another concern. For all the live turtles pulled from the oil, there were many more that washed up dead on Gulf shores and showed no visible signs of oil exposure. So this is a, a Kemp's Ridley. It was found uh, floating northeast of, of uh, Cat Island in Mississippi. Last summer, the New York Times visited Dr. Brian Stacy, a veterinarian with NOAA Fisheries. He was in the process of dissecting many of the 600 or so sea turtle carcasses, looking for clues as to the cause of death. You know, drowning is a, a concern, as is acute exposure to a, a toxin. Dr. Stacy's findings are part of a massive federal investigation that's still underway into the full environmental impact of the BP oil spill. Ultimately, if oil proves a factor in the death of an endangered species, that could potentially increase BP's liability. A lot of times our evidence is indirect. You know, some... Because of the pending lawsuit, scientists have yet to release any definitive conclusions, but much of the evidence so far points to a different culprit than oil, shrimp nets. This is the... Uh typical sea turtle esophagus. These are uh, called esophageal papillae. And I can already see something significant here. Um, there's a, a piece of shrimp. You don't see shrimp consumed as a, as a part of the normal diet. Shrimp are very fast. The most plausible scenario where an animal would be able to ingest shrimp is, is in, a, in a fisher's net. Well, we got a call about a shrimper who had caught him in his net. And uh, he wasn't sure if he was still alive or not, so he put him on deck. Bycatch is a major cause of sea turtle mortality globally, primarily trawls, gillnets, and um, hook and line gear, you know, especially gear that does not allow the turtle to reach the surface to breathe. To prevent turtle deaths, federal regulations require shrimp trawlers to insert a turtle escape hatch into their nets, or a TED. But enforcement is difficult, and the state of Louisiana has refused to enforce the law altogether. In contrast, Mississippi has strengthened its protection for turtles. Most of the animals we, we have been finding are from right here. Soon after the oil spill began, Moby Salangi of the Marine Mammal Institute in Gulfport saw an unusual spike in the number of dead turtles washing up on Mississippi shores. Louisiana opened its shrimping season earlier than normal. And then in one day, we got about 27 or 28. The next day, we got another 14 or 15. And so the currents and the tide if the animals died in Louisiana, brought them right into Mississippi. Federal investigators say they're now looking into a possible connection between the turtle deaths and state fisheries. The states last year had a regularly changing fishing rules because of the oil spill. So that was a big change. How that um, may have played out in terms of turtle strandings, those are things that we are still looking at. In the past couple of months, there has been another unusually high spike of turtle strandings in Mississippi. Oil residue does still exist in places, but like last year, many of the dead turtles show signs of drowning in fishing nets. It's not um, different, substantially different from the results from last year. You know, we're seeing similar things. 